Welcome everybody to Banjo Quest. Today I thought we'd do a little bit of a fireside chat. This topic has been coming up more and more with my students and people that I've been interacting with online and I just wanted to at least set the record straight from my perspective and my approach to this very contentious subject and that is of course about tablature. What I've been hearing from people is that tab is bad and that if you use tab you can't learn well, you can't play musically, you can't be authentic in the music, and I wanted to set the record straight from my perspective as a musician and as somebody who teaches people every day. Now, I've had a couple students even roll in recently who say that they don't wanna have anything to do with Tab, They've heard tab is bad and they just wanna steer clear entirely. They don't wanna use it. They wanna use other ways of learning. So for me, tab is a tool, just like any other tool in the toolbox. It is an incredibly useful one at that. Because we're working in an oral tradition, learning by ear is a really big deal and a really important goal. Everybody wants this ability. They wanna be able to hear a tune and they want to be able to play it by ear and just have it come out of their fingertips just like they heard it. So if we're working with this oral tradition, then why would we use tab? I think that's what a lot of people are asking. Why bother with tab? If I'm looking at my favorite musicians of the past and they're not using tab, then why should I have to bother to learn it? Why is it important for me? And I have five reasons why I think tablature is a good thing. And I'm going to list them for you now. Number one, Learning from tablature helps you visualize the fretboard. It shows you where your fingers need to go. And I have a lot of students who I've discovered are visual learners. They can see shapes and they can remember shapes, but they have a hard time remembering numbers or names of notes. And so this is a great way to enter into the world of the fretboard where you're putting your hands on that fretboard and you can see visually a visual representation of what the heck you're doing. It's great for memorization and it's great to start to learn the patterns that are common with folk music. Now there are many people who claim that tab doesn't reliably show rhythm. But for us, for claw hammer players, it actually does. We're living in a world of eighth notes and quarter notes. And to be able to see those, visually see those represented on a piece of paper, allows you to understand the underpinning rhythms of claw hammer banjo. And if you can understand that, the world of claw hammer really is wide open to you. If you can understand basic rhythms like a double thumbing pattern compared to a bum ditty pattern, that really reveals the entire world of claw hammer to you and seeing that represented on a page can really make the light bulb go off. When a player has the ability to read and write tab, you can start to compile a visual dictionary of tunes and phrases. So when you start to struggle with a certain phrase, you can track that phrase, you can write it out and you can refer to it. It can help you really stay on target. When I was creating Banjo Blitz, I found myself swimming in phrases all the time. These huge variety of loops that I was working on to build my foundational technique. The only way I could have possibly kept track of those at a glance is with tablature. And a single page of tablature can hold a huge amount of information instantly, visually. I can look down, see the phrases that I need to work on for that week, and just get the work done. Number four, you can share your musical ideas with people all over the world. Tablature has become a standard way to communicate musical ideas. And likewise, I can pick up Banjo Newsletter and I can see my favorite banjo player tabbing out their musical ideas and I can get a glimpse into the way their mind works. That is incredibly valuable to me. Number five, and I think this is the most important point, Tablature makes music accessible to everyone. So if somebody walks in here with no musical background, I can hand them a banjo and within 45 minutes, I can show them the banjo basics and then I can save that last 15 minutes to show them how to read tablature and then I can send them out into the world and they will have access to thousands and thousands of tunes. I think this is incredible that somebody with no musical background can get that understanding of the music so quickly. And to be able to step up and have no prior musical background and then leave an hour long lesson with this enriched understanding and ability to go out there in the world and find tunes that they love and potentially learn them from tablature and share them with others, to me, that helps keep old time music 
vital, and alive. Now, does this mean that I recommend a 100% tab-based diet for a banjo player? No, absolutely not. If you only have one tool and that tool is a hammer, then every problem you face begins to look like a nail. And that's not the kind of musician you want to be. If you're finding yourself overly reliant on tab, for example, if you can't play music without looking at a sheet of paper, there is a problem that you need to solve and tab is only going to make it worse. You need to spend some time away from the paper. So don't come away from this tablature manifesto and think that I think tab is the be all and end all. I think of it as one aspect. If you think of your musical life as a gem that you're slowly refining over time, you can think of tablature use as cutting one facet of that gem. Just like any beautiful thing, you can't just work on one side, you need to approach it from lots of different angles. So tablature is one side, but it's not the only side of you as a musician. And one thing to think about is that when you are using tab, that is just your beginning point. It's your starting place. It's the entry into the race. You still have a whole leg of that race to run. You've got to keep working. You've got to put the paper away once you have that skeleton down and start to make it your own. So I actually do think there is a problem with tab, and this may not be what you think I'm going to say. I think that there is a danger with tab that people use tab to build repertoire above all else. And this is why I often steer my students away from things like a tune of the week, because I want my students to spend a lot of time with tunes. I don't want them to just drive by a tune, quickly memorize it with tab, and then move on to the next one. And I think... What I've observed over the years is people have a tendency to collect. There are these collectors out there who want as many tunes in their repertoire as they possibly can. And I advocate a much slower approach, and I think I go for depth rather than breadth. You don't want to be that player who, as Tommy Gerald said, knew a thousand tunes and couldn't play a single one. You want to be able to go deep on single tunes and make them your own, make them sound like you and use them to express your ideas about how this all should sound. And in that vein, tab can be a little bit of an enemy because it does encourage tune collecting rather than tune learning. So to counter this propensity towards tune collecting and a repertoire building approach, you want to slow yourself down. Give yourself a tune budget. Say, I'm not going to learn a tune a week anymore. I'm going to do a tune a month. I'm going to do a tune every two months. Give yourself time to settle into this music and really go deep with it so you can express yourself with the tunes and make the tunes your own. Your goal whenever you learn a tune should be, I'm going to play this and I'm going to play it so somebody can recognize it as the tune, but I still want it to be something they've never heard before. That to me is the ultimate goal. And that's why tab can kind of fight you a little bit because it does encourage you to learn so many tunes because you can learn them so quickly. But I challenge you to slow yourself down, be disciplined and go for one tune at a time, fall in love with that tune and make it your own. Let me just leave you with this one final thought. If you run into somebody out there in the world who's saying that your way of learning old time tunes is illegitimate or that it's not gonna give you the authentic version of the tune, your hackles should be up. As a player in the modern age, you should be using any modern tool that you can get your hands on to learn this stuff. Tablature, recording, software to slow things down, record and playback of your own playing, learning from teachers, learning by yourself, learning from online communities. These are all great ways to learn. There's nothing inauthentic about any of it. And that word authenticity, it's a power play. And when anybody's playing those power games with you, you should be suspicious because this is your music just as much as it is theirs. And you should feel free to move about the cabin. And so I will leave you with that for now. I hope you guys have a banjo weekend and you get lots of practice time in. We're having a great time over on Patreon. We're diving deep on Cumberland Gap. Talk about going deep. We are learning multiple versions of the song. We're learning how to create variations. And this week I showed some secrets on how to make vocals really pop in an arrangement like Cumberland Gap. So hop on over there if you want more of that material and plenty of tablature. And I will see you right here next week on Banjo Quest.